A newly minted law in Arizona presumes everyone to be illegal unless you can prove otherwise. The law compels law enforcement officers to stop anyone whom they reasonably suspect might be an illegal immigrant to demand to see papers proving that that person is, in fact, in this country legally. We've been calling it the Papers, Please law. It sparked demonstrations and threats of boycotts. We'll have more on those coming up this sh- uh, on the show. It's also caused co- coast-to-coast controversy. So it is not surprising that former vice presidential candidate and half-term Alaska Governor Sarah Palin has been asked to weigh in on this matter. Governor Palin says requiring police officers to stop people for the crime of looking like an illegal immigrant will not beget racial profiling. There is no ability or opportunity in there for the racial profiling and and shame on the lamestream media again for turning this into something that it is not. I think it's shameful, too, that the Obama administration has um, allowed to this to become more of a, a racial issue by perpetuating this myth that racial profiling is a part of this law. This myth that racial profiling is part of this law. Okay, let's let's debunk the racial profiling myth with the help of Arizona Governor Jen Brewer, who signed the Papers, Please bill into law on Friday. It's not through racial profiling. If not through racial profiling, how should a police officer determine whether someone looks like an illegal immigrant? How should police work up a reasonable suspicion that a person is an illegal immigrant? What should police be watching for? This is what happened on Friday when Governor Brewer was faced with that question and the opportunity to bust the racial profiling myth. What does an illegal immigrant look like? I do not know. I do not know what an illegal immigrant looks like. I can tell you that I think that there are people in Arizona that assume they know what an illegal immigrant looks like. This is the fundamental problem with the Arizona law. Its proponents insist that race will not be the reason people are stopped and forced to show their papers. They insist it won't be racial profiling, that race won't be the grounds on which people are stopped by police. But they can't say what will be the grounds on which people are stopped by police. Also complicating the insistence that Arizona won't be racial profiling is the fact that many of the people doing that insisting themselves are in favor of profiling. And they admit it out loud. And I think that was quite unfortunate that, to me, it was a fear of being politically incorrect to not, I'm going to use the word, profile this guy. Profiling in in the sense of, of finding out what his radical beliefs were, but I say Profiling in in the context of, of doing whatever we can to save innocent American lives, I'm all for it then. Sarah Palin speaking in the context of the Fort Hood shooting last year. So when Governor Palin insists that Arizona won't be profiling now, keep in mind, she says she's all for profiling. And it's not just Sarah Palin. There is and has been lots and lots and lots and lots of support on the right for profiling, both racial profiling and religious profiling. 90% of these terrorists are men, Islamic men between 20 and 30. Why are we pretending that all of us should get equal training? Shouldn't we just tell, if you're a 20 to 30 year old uh, Islamic male, even if you have no evil intentions, expect to be delayed. We have to, we have to profile. You better be careful. You'll be accused of profiling. A whole sense of don't profile, don't pick on people. That, this is, that's been going on for, for quite some time. The fact is, while the overwhelming majority of Muslims are outstanding people, uh, on the other hand, 100% of the Islamic terrorists are, are Muslims, and that is our main enemy today. So why we should not be profiling people because of their religion? There should be a separate line to scrutinize anybody with the name Abdul or Ahmed or Mohammed. We should take anybody who's a known Muslim and put them in a separate line. Call it a VIP line. Better. It is a massive inconvenience and maybe even a deterrent to the economy to have this going on in the way that it does with elderly women and little kids being searched and frisked as thoroughly as anybody else uh, when nobody imagines that such people are going to be the ones setting off a bomb on an airplane and nobody really imagines a lot of blonde blue-eyed people from Sweden sneaking across the border. It just isn't the way it happens. So uh, this is, uh, if it's an effective law enforcement technique done in good faith, people may have to endure some inconvenience. What we're saying here is that some people are going to have to endure inconvenience as a opposed to everybody having to endure it. Some people. 
racial profiling is pretty popular on the right. Check out this one other argument in favor of racial profiling. This is important, actually. This is from former Congressman Scott McInnes. He was speaking on the floor of the U.S. House of Representatives in November 2001. Watch this, and I'll tell you afterwards why this is so important. I have seen, and I've been very disappointed and discouraged recently, about some people playing what, as I would call, the race card against profiling. So how do you build a profile? What kind of profile am I talking about? Well, I think, for example, ethnic background is a legitimate component of it. It is a huge mistake, a huge mistake for us to allow political pressure by a very select number of people to give any kind of commitment that we will not allow ethnic background to be considered. Once you begin to use ethnic profiling as a component, one of several components, to build a profile, I think it is very legitimate. I think it's smart. That guy, the guy who accused people of playing the race card against profiling, who thinks using ethnic profiling is, in his words, smart, uh, he might just be the next governor of Colorado. As friend of this show, David Sirota, pointed out today in Colorado that yay for racial profiling former Congressman Scott McInnes has gotten rid of the mustache and is now considered the frontrunner for the Republican nomination for governor in Colorado. Today, Scott McInnes said if he is elected governor, he's eager to follow Arizona's lead. Jan Brewer in Arizona does yes. the... Abs- uh, so yes. I, I'm going to wave the magic wand. You're governor. Yes. What would you do? I'd do something very similar. I'll tell you the situation. The federal government has refused to act. And finally, some governor stood up and said, we're stopping the retreat. No more retreat. Scott McInnes, well-respected, top-tier, mainstream candidate who, by all accounts, stands a perfectly reasonable chance at becoming the next governor of Colorado, now promising a sequel to Arizona's Papers, Please law after a track record of enthusiasm for stopping you, subjecting you to law enforcement scrutiny based on what your race is. It would be easier to believe all the people saying that Arizona's new law doesn't target people based on race if the same people giving us those assurances were not so enthusiastic about law enforcement targeting people based on race. 